If you're watching this video, you're either A, that's a one, not an A. You're either one, curious about my artistic background, or two, wanting to like get to know more about AP art and get ideas for your portfolio. Just a quick disclaimer, this video, I did a 3D art portfolio, but I give really good tips on like 2D concentration ideas and just how to go about your portfolio as a whole. I got a five on my portfolio, so I think I know what I'm doing, but I'd really appreciate some comments down below letting me know what you think of my art or like which one your favorite one was. And by the way, just like ignore this empty space right here. I'm gonna like put up pictures of my art right here, so just wait for that. But before we get into the video, make sure to go check out some of my other videos, maybe subscribe. This video is kind of like just giving some advice to art students because the school year's starting, so there's probably a bunch of you watching this that are needing ideas or inspiration. But I also have a bunch of other cool videos on my channel, so definitely go check those out. For those of you in AP Studio Art, you probably know all year you're gonna be working on this huge portfolio and it has three sections. The first one's concentration, the next one's breadth, and the last one is quality. Now I'll kind of talk about all three sections briefly and then talk about my artwork for these sections and then I'll give you tips for each one. And by the way, if any of you have any questions about the portfolio or the process or anything about this whole idea, definitely leave them down below in the comments. I'll be so happy to answer them because I just want to help you guys out because I watched a lot of these videos when I was trying to gain inspiration. So now I kind of want to give back. So first up is what I think is like the hardest part of this portfolio and that's the concentration. The reason it's hard is because you have to come up with this like cohesive theme for all your artwork and the theme can't be like something plain. It has to be like really unique. And that's something that I struggled finding but I'll talk more about like inspiration and like ideas for your concentration in a second. But basically it asks you to upload 12 images of your art and I'm not necessarily sure about 2D but for 3D, I didn't really have to make 12 pieces. I just had to upload 12 images. So what I did is I made nine pieces of artwork and then I upload like three detail shots of my artwork and that added up to 12. But however many pieces you decide to do, they all have to like follow this theme and that's what's gonna be known as your concentration. Now I don't wanna be rude or anything, but try not to do anything basic with your concentration, like, oh, your concentration is flowers or maybe like animals or something. I mean, if you're really good at that particular subject, go ahead and do it, but make sure to make your stuff unique. Don't just draw a picture or sculpt a flower or something and make like 12 of those. You have to have like an evolving theme. You have to show in your art that your ideas are expanding and you're coming up with new things. The people grading are probably going to see hundreds of the same thing. Like, they're probably going to see a bunch of different concentrations about flowers. So how are you going to make yours stand out? One really good tip that I have for you is to turn one of these basic ideas into something else. What I mean is like, turn something physical into abstract or vice versa. This is what I did with my concentration. So I had like a surrealist vision of music. I took like the physical and abstract aspects of music and turned it into a bunch of surrealist sculptures. You need to twist your ideas into something the graders have never seen before and make it stunning and like unique. So another big part of the concentration is you have to make a concentration statement. Now this is just stating what your concentration is and giving a little detail to it. And then you're going to have to make another statement that's like describing how the concentration plays a role with all your works. So I have my laptop. I'm just going to read my concentration statement off. My concentration focuses on fabricating a surrealist vision of music. Through protrusion from round bulbous forms, I am able to evoke images of instrumental shapes. Music develops auditory sensations that touch on various genres, each bringing forth different emotions from the listener. Through my work with stoneware and high fire glazes, I am able to recreate this conception of music, as well as construct a melody of colors, rhythmic and flowing forms, and a harmony between art and emotion. <sighs> That's a lot, right? The biggest thing is you need to make it sound good. So 
I don't know if you heard, I tied a bunch of like music related terms into my statement like harmony or melody. So that really reiterates what I'm trying to get across in the statement. And then as I said before, you're gonna have to have another statement describing how that plays a role in each of your artworks. But before I get into that, I'll probably show my artwork so you're not like wondering what all of this means. So all of the following in my concentration are done with stoneware or as other people know it as clay. And then it's all glazed with high fire glazes. The first image or piece is this dark blue form. It's like two spheres and then it has a ton of different flared tubes coming out of it. The two spheres are like balancing on the tubes on the table. The next one is this single sphere balancing on its base and it has three tubes coming out of it and there's a bunch of different crazy colors on the side. The third one is another single sphere but it's propped up by a few tubes and it has like one really long tube in the back and it has dark blues and bright greens. Now you probably see the pattern that I'm going with here. All of these pieces have these flared tubes on them and I'll go over what that means in a second because that's a really big part of having that cohesive theme and how it plays a role with music. Now this fourth photo is one of those detail shots that I mentioned earlier. I did a lot of crazy experimentation with like high fire glazes and mixing different chemicals to see what crazy effects I can get with different colors. So I included three detail shots that were my favorite and showed off the best of my experimentation, if you will. The fifth photo is this large blue bowl and it's propped up by like three curved tubes on the bottom and it's blue and has some green in it and silver. The sixth is like sort of this mirror image piece. I was trying to get the idea of like parallel dimensions because you have these two spheres and they're like perfectly the same on each side but opposite colors. The next photo is this detail shot of the glaze where you can see like the brown color but these tiny blue dots poking through. The eighth photo is this vase-like thing, but it has three tubes and each one is coming out of the previous one. So the ninth one is this like golden sphere and it's propped up by these short tubes and then it has this huge like red and white giant tube. The next photo is just like a detail shot on those reds and whites that I managed to get because I was pretty proud of discovering that combination. The 11th is this green sphere sitting on its side with three large pink tubes coming out of it. And the last one is this large orange vase with a bunch of tubes coming out of the top. Looking at everything as a whole, you can see they all sort of belong with each other in a way. And also you can see like my evolving ideas. I started out with regular tubes and then I had longer tubes, curved tubes, tubes coming out of each other, giant flared tubes, and just so many different ideas. All your pieces have to look like they follow a common theme and evolve as you go through. Now I'm gonna read off that second statement about how my concentration plays a role in each of these pieces. These works are meant to remind viewers of many aspects of music, but also remain in the abstract form. The shape of the narrow tubes with flared tops were specifically designed to resemble instruments. The various lengths and scatterings of these tubes in images one and 12 evoke the idea of organ pipes. The longer, more profound tubes in images two and six mimic the unique trombone. The larger opening in image nine captures the concept of a gramophone. I also experimented with high fire glazes to add an intriguing take on different types of music. The dark rustic color found in images one, six, and nine parallel to the colors found on brass instruments. The bright oranges and yellows in images 10 and 12 arouse the emotions of love and passion present in modern day ballads, whereas the shades of blue in images one, five, and six depress the viewer into a state of sadness similarly to jazz and blues. The vivid splashes of color in images 2, 8, and 11 refer to the bubbly tune of pop. I have included detail shots in images 4, 7, and 10 to highlight the best of my experimentation with high fire glazes. Lastly, I created artwork that was functional as seen in the vase-like forms in images 2 and 12 and the bowl in image 5 to balance the works from being abstract. This thorough approach in form, color, and functionality creates diverse yet unified artwork. Yes, I know that was a lot too, but it really captures the essence of what my concentration was all about. I not only described the physical aspects of music, how the pieces kind of look like different instruments, 
but also the abstract aspects of music, how the different colors represent different emotions or genres. I also had some of my art be functional, like vases or bowls, and then just regular abstract. You really have to be diverse with what you make, but make it all come together in one cohesive portfolio. And that's really hard to do. Now, if you thought that was hard, you have a whole nother section to work on. This section is called breath, and it's basically showcasing all your talents and art. Here, you're gonna wanna show that you can work really large scale, but also really small scale. You're also gonna wanna show that you can use a ton of different materials, not just one, like, in my concentration, I worked with clay and glaze, that's it. But in this section, I worked with a ton of different materials. And also you need to show that you can't just focus on one kind of art, so you're not just an abstract artist, you can also do realistic stuff. You really wanna show the judges what you're capable of here. I don't know about 2D, but for 3D it says you have to upload 16 images. You don't have to do 16 entire different pieces. What I did is make eight pieces, and I just uploaded two pictures of each. But you can do however many you want, you just have to have 16 pictures. The good news is you don't have any writing statements in this section, so you just have to let your art do the talking. So my first image is this large dandelion held up by a fairy, and I don't know if you can see, it's like right back there. This entire sculpture is like pretty large, just like maybe three feet tall, and it's made out of wire and insulation foam, some aluminum foil. The second shot is just like details of the whole piece, and I feel like this one really shows I can take industrial materials and create them into a peaceful art. The next piece is this hand like coming out of a shell and I know it's like a really weird idea but it just randomly came to me and I feel like it shows that I can think outside of the box and come up with weird, peculiar, surrealist type of things. The fourth photo is a different angle of the piece and as you can see I used a lot of different colors to give it a good kick and this one's made out of clay and glaze. The next artwork is this really weird thing I made out of different colored strings. Basically what I was trying to do is have like three flat planes of color intersect each other. Looking at the sixth photo, you can see like the blue plane. If you look from the side, each like yarn color creates this flat rectangle and all three of them intersect each other. I feel like this one shows I'm really good at thinking in three dimensions. So my next piece is this square hole carved into a random rock. This one's kind of like challenging your intellect because you'd expect circle holes in places, but this one's just like a nice clean cut square hole in a rock. The eighth photo shows a different angle of the artwork so you can really see how deep this hole is. And I feel like this one really shows how precise I can be with such a hard rigid material. This next sculpture is this really abstract form with a bunch of waves and stuff. And this one's inspired by one of my favorite architects. Her name is Zaha Hadid. And she has this amazing building in Azerbaijan that features these kind of curve-like forms. I'll put a photo on the screen. And then looking at my 10th image, you can see I kind of gave it my own kick with this cool scaly texture. The next artwork is these three chickens eating out of like a barrel of food. This is made out of plasticine, which is an oil-based clay that never dries out. The 12th photo really shows the details in the feathers on the birds and like the wood of the barrel. And it really shows that I can work realistic and not only abstract. The next piece is like this beautiful vase. It's a very unique shape. You don't commonly see vases of this shape. And it has like this dripping glaze pattern on it. The 14th photo is just a detail shot of the glaze, and I feel like this one really shows that I can make functional vessels as well. And finally, the last piece in the breath section is this giant life-size silver human with six arms. Now, believe it or not, I actually wrapped my entire body in tape, and I had to cut myself out of it to get that shape. And then I just made four more arms and spray-painted it all silver. The last shot is just a detail shot, and I feel like this one shows that I can work really large scale and not just have little desktop items. So I hope you took some inspiration from that. I had really big forms like that person and then really small ones. I used a ton of different materials like clay, which you can manipulate easily, to a whole solid rock that you actually have to carve into. And then the last section of your portfolio, you don't really have to worry about, it's called quality. And basically, you just have to upload your 10 best images 
of whatever artwork you want. You don't have to make any new artwork. You can choose images from your concentration or breath, but you just have to choose your 10 best artwork. The graders looking at this section, they're just gonna be looking at how good of quality artwork you can produce. And that's about it. So keep in mind, you have to do this in less than a school year, not even less than a year, less than a school year. So if it's summertime, you might as well start collecting your ideas or maybe even starting on some projects. It was a tough feat, but I managed to do it and I got a five. So if you're unique with your work, you can too. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, definitely leave them down below in the comments. I'll be so happy to answer them. And if you want, you can go check out any of my other videos. I'd really appreciate it and maybe consider subscribing. And I guess that's it. So see you next week. Peace.